It's time now for Super Natural Ministry. Super Natural Ministry with Jay West and Larry Langston. Welcome to Super Natural Ministry. Jay reminded me that in a previous broadcast, I had introduced the program as Supernatural Miracles. <laughs> well, we do make mistakes sometimes. We're not perfect, and that keeps us humble, <laughs> keeps us reaching. That was the for first mistake. I've known, I've known you for 10 months. That was the first mistake you've ever made. So oh, my about. goodness. You are so generous. <laughs> what a great friend you are. I'm keeping you on my Christmas list and in my Rolodex. That is for sure. Uh, you have a Rolodex? <laughs> wow, you really are old. <laughs> but the program is Supernatural Ministry. And those of you that have heard us a few times already know that we call it Supernatural Ministry because the most natural thing for a Christian to do is to share ministry everywhere they go. And when you do, God puts his super on it. Well, today I have Jay West with me uh, from Omaha, Nebraska. I'm coming from Houston, Texas, and we're going to be talking about supernatural giving today, Jay. Yeah, you know, we ended the broadcast and you mentioned the word give, and we always look for another topic. And I thought, well, giving would be a good one. And we have two good scripture verses. Do you want to share yours first? Do you want me to share mine? I will. I'll share from Psalms 112, verse 3, from the Passion Translation, which I really enjoy because the Passion Translation is almost like everyday conversation and very easy to understand. So let me read to you about the generous man, Psalms 112, verse 3, even if darkness overtakes them, sunrise brilliance will come bursting through because... They are gracious to others, so tender and true. Life is good for the one who is generous and charitable, conducting affairs with honesty and truth. Their circumstances will never shake them, and others will not forget their example. They will not live in fear or dread of what may come, for their hearts are firm, ever secure in their faith. Steady and strong, they will not be afraid, but will calmly face their every foe until they all go down in defeat. Never stingy and always generous to those in need. Their lives of influence and honor will never be forgotten, for they are full of good deeds. What a wonderful scripture and what a wonderful text for us to be sharing from today. This is so inspirational to me, Jay. You know, I like, I, I don't have your translation in front of me, but it said in there that they won't be afraid of the darkness or something. So many, so many people don't give because they're afraid that once it's out of their hands, it's out of their life. And what they don't understand is how much God wants to bless them. You know, uh, I think we've shared this before. The Bible says God loves a cheerful giver, but he'll take it from a grouch. You know? <laughs> You're right. You're so, right. He you know, loves a cheerful I, giver. My my experience is that God always gives back to me and more. The laws of sowing and reaping go into effect. And Ephesians comes in mind. He's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. So when we're thinking about giving, you know, and we feel a prompting and we're like, okay, I'm looking at my bank account. I'm looking at my bills. I'm looking at the need. And then I'm back to my bank account and my bills. And we oftentimes don't get to the need and we just, just dismiss it. And we'd say, well, somebody else will have to do it. And then so, we miss the blessings. So are you saying, Jay, that as we often in the broadcast encourage people to follow the nudge of the Holy Spirit and remember that we're called to be witnesses, do you also feel that there can be a nudging of the Holy Spirit to be generous toward those around us? Right. Oh, absolutely. You know, I've given away cars. I've given away land. I've given away refrigerators, I've given away our china, I've given away our furniture. And every time we had a prompting to do that, in a very short amount of time, what I got back was bigger and better. And it was often supernatural. Nobody else knew that I'd given this stuff away. Somebody would feel prompted at the very moment that I'm giving something away to actually be bringing it over to me and give it back to me. There's been so many wonderful occurrences like that, that it's just very, very easy for, for me to do that. And when my wife was here, she would say the same thing. She said, you know, 
initially when you give things away, I wonder, but I learned really fast that God just replenished us rapidly. Yes, he does. I remember several stories that, that I've heard from you and, and you and your wife would pray about it and be in agreement and you would just see amazing things happen. And I'm hearing in my thought processes right now, oftentimes whenever we start sharing these stories and examples, people scoff or mock and they go, well, I just don't believe in giving to get. I just don't believe in giving to get. Well, that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about the, a law of sowing and reaping. If you plant apples, my friend, you're going to get apples. If you plant oranges, you will get oranges. If you plant okra, you get okra. If you plant kindness, you will reap kindness. If you sow financial blessings into the life of someone else, you will reap financial blessings. And Jay, what thrills me is to know I can be an answer to somebody's prayer. God can work through me to be a blessing to someone else. And that's very humbling. And it touches my heart to know that, especially when you're nudged by the Lord to meet someone else's need or to share with someone else, what a blessing you have just become. <laughs> you know, I often say to people now, I don't give to get anything back. I give because I love Jesus. All right. But I also understand that when I give, I do get something back, but it's not to hoard it, to keep it, it's to give again. Exactly. And then I get more back, and then it's to give again even more. But I also give just because I love Jesus. Absolutely. That's the primary reason. We yeah. give because we love people. We love because we have a spirit of generosity. I would really hate to be a person giving because I felt compelled to, or I felt pressured to, or I had a duty to give. That takes the joy out of it. But I truly believe like there is a spirit or an attitude of uh, joy and a uh, spirit and attitude of peace. These are fruits of the Holy Spirit, but I believe you can have a spirit of generosity. And when that spirit of generosity comes on you, you can't help but share. You look around for needs and you know that you're being an answer to someone else's prayer. Yeah, if I can read my scripture from Isaiah 32, verse eight, a generous man devises generous things and by generosity, he shall stand. A generous person is looking for ways to be generous. They're not looking, a hoarder is looking for ways to be hoard, is to hoard them, you know, but a generous person is, is looking for ways to bless, to encourage. Oftentimes, uh, just in restaurants, I tend to tip a uh, wait staff 50%, and so every once in a while I tip them 100%, and they're always shocked, but it opens up doors to witness and to share. And it's not like I'm blessed beyond, like, it's not like I, I am blessed. I shouldn't have said it that way. It's not like I make a lot of money, okay? It's not like I have a huge income, but what I do have is a huge God. And he blesses back so many times, over and over and over. Absolutely. You mentioned earlier that some people are hesitant to give because they see it as a subtraction and they see it as a loss and they worry about how they're going to go forward. But we should see it as a gain. First of all, we're not totally responsible for our flow of income. If you feel like everything you have is because you worked for it, you grasped it, you captured it, friend, understand that salvation comes by grace. It's not by works, which we've done, but we're saved by, by faith, saved by grace through faith. It's not our works. It's a gift of God. And also our finance, the breath in our lungs, our living. It's not because we deserved it or we worked for it. It's a gift from God. And your finance can be the same way. Yes, you should be diligent. The hand of the diligent will, will be turned to prosperity. So be diligent. Yes, work. Be an entrepreneur. Be creative. All of that is good, but don't depend on your own hands alone. Know that God's hand is bigger than your hands and that even our finance is a gift from God. It's not just because of our works. But in Deuteronomy, I think it's 18, it says God gives us power to get wealth, right? But, but he also gives us power to release it. He gives us power of the Holy Spirit. He gives us power to heal the sick. He gives us power to... Uh, hear uh, answers to prayer. He gives us power to get prophecies. He gives us power to get words of knowledge. It's, he gives us power in so many areas. Jesus said to the disciples, I've given you power and authority. People look at this and say, well, it's a power struggle. It's a power thing. It's not. God initiated. It's in his word. If you don't like it, argue with him. Don't argue with us. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, the scripture, Jay says, I think of this often. He gives seed to the sower. You know, I see needs probably every day. 
uh, through social media, through our Best Life TV network, and just being in public. There are needs every day. And I've, I've said to my wife often, I need to be wealthy. <laughs> I need to be really wealthy because I know what I would do with it. It ruins most people. But I have so many things I want to be part of. And as I see needs on almost a daily basis, and as we're sowing into multiple areas, even right now, my wife and I are sowing, and we say to the glory of God, we're sowing to several areas. But my heart is, Lord, you said that you would provide seed to the sower. And I'm sowing, and I'm, I'm looking for more seed, Lord. I'm not just looking for a harvest for myself. I want to see that flow continue so I can turn that back around again. Well, I think there's another verse that says, cast your bread upon the water. As soon it'll come back to you on every wave. You know, uh, God's a giver. He gave us his only begotten son. Right? Absolutely. I mean, he gave us the most important, probably one of the most important things in his life, you know, as God. He gave us his son. And then he wants us to model that, you know. Absolutely. So, well, there are so there's so many areas to give in. Uh, I'll tell a quick story. I'll try to be brief, but I was preaching for uh, an acquaintance uh, in uh, Virginia Beach, Virginia. He had asked me to come several times, and I was unable to come, but I was there in a conference, and I said, okay, I'll stay over and, and speak for you. And he said, well, I'll, I'll pick you up at the hotel. He picked me up in this old van. It was, I think it was might have been a Volkswagen. It was so old, it would hardly pull off from the curb. And he said, do you mind if we pick up a few people on the way to church? I said, no, I don't mind. Jay, I promise you, every time two more people got on, we barely got off the curb. It would barely get there. It was so worn out. And so I'm sitting in service, and I'm just thinking about this process. And I'm thinking about my black Jeep Cherokee with a gray interior, standard transmission that was one of my favorite vehicles that was practically paid off. And I'm just thinking, you know, this guy needs a vehicle. He really needs a vehicle so badly. So after church, uh, we dropped everybody off, barely got to the restaurant. We're sitting there and I said, Miguel, what is your favorite vehicle? And he just lit up like a light bulb. And he said, I love Jeep Cherokees. <laughs> and I said, why? He said, well, when I was a boy in Cuba, my dad would take me fishing in his Jeep Cherokee, and that's just nostalgic to me, and I love Jeep Cherokees, and I kind of dropped my head, and I said, well, Miguel, I have a black Jeep Cherokee, and how would you like to have it? If I made a gift of it to you, how would you, and he just, he was speechless, like, I, I, I can't believe it. I said, well, fly up to Ohio in a couple of weeks. I lived in Ohio with them. Fly up in a couple of weeks, and I'll have the title ready for you, and, and you can take it back, and you can enjoy it. Do you know, Jay, that's been at least 15 years ago, and a couple of weeks ago, he sent me a letter, and he said, the Jeep Cherokee is still running great. I love it. Thank you so much. It changed my life. I couldn't believe he was still driving it, but here's a point I want to make. To the glory of God, Jay, I will never lack for a vehicle to drive. I have been, I've given numerous vehicles away, nice ones that I love. And God always brings something back. Uh, people bring a vehicle. They say, drive this. And my son brings a beautiful vehicle. Drive this. Or something is given to us. I'll never lack for a vehicle. And my friend, whatever you sow, you can see that come back into your life with abundance. And Jay, the reason why, God's word is true. And the scripture says, whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. And in conclusion, I'll just say, if you sow kindness, get ready, friend. It's coming back. If you sow vegetables with friends and food stuff, it's coming back. If you share a vehicle, if you share finance, if you're faithful to support God's kingdom, God is faithful to his word. <laughs> you know, I have the same experience, Larry. I've given away three cars, and I, I don't know how many cars I've had, maybe 20, 25 cars. I've never had a car loan from a dealership. I've never had a car loan from a bank. We've always been able to buy what we can afford. I gave a car away once and 10 minutes later, a car was given to me and the guy didn't even know. He just said, I don't know why I'm doing this. Do you need a car? I said, yeah, I do. And, uh, and, and, and dovetailing on what you say, I tell people all the time, whatever you need, give it away. If you need love, give it away. Give it away. Joy, give it away. If give you need prayer, give it away. You know, I was sick. Can I just share a story real quick? 
I was sick with irritable bowel syndrome for three years. And I was just walking into the healing ministry at that time. I didn't know a lot of things. And irritable bowel syndrome, uh, the number one symptom is pain in your stomach. At least it was for me. And it felt like there was a sharp two-inch knife drilling their way out of it. Anyway, uh, at one point, God told me to give my health away. I said, how do I give my health away? I'm sick. He said, well, number one, start praying for others who are sick. So I got every prayer list I could find. I started praying for other people. Well, then he told me to give blood. And I had given blood many times, but the last time I'd given blood, the, they put the needle in my arm and it clotted. But when it clots, you're supposed to take it out and start over. But this attendant didn't do that. He twisted the needle in my arm and I about went through the roof of the blood mobile and I just said, I'm never giving blood again. So God said, give your health away. He said, give blood. I reluctantly, I went and did it. I never had a problem with it since. I've been giving blood for years. And it was shortly after that, that on June 1st, 1991, Irritable bowel syndrome went away. The doctor said, you will have it for the rest of your life. But Jesus didn't get the memo. But part of the process of the healing was I had to give my health away to get my health back. Wow. Wow. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. That is a fact of God's word. Well, the scripture I read in Psalms is just a beautiful, beautiful translation. And it basically says the generous man, the charitable man is not going to walk in darkness. He's not going to fear. His way is going to go before him. The way is going to be made bright. His path will be crowned with brilliance. I mean, and I love the scripture that he that giveth to the poor lends to the Lord. Oh, yes, and that's the a great Lord verse. will repay. Yeah, I use that verse a lot. That's See, I told you we'll get other verses as we go along. That's a, that's a fantastic verse. Whoever gives to the poor makes a loan to God. God repays the loan. So yes, he will. I've yes, seen will. that happen over and over and over. Well, I just want to encourage uh, you, our viewers, as we encourage you to be a witness to enjoy supernatural ministry, let me encourage you to be supernaturally generous. Maybe it isn't natural to be generous to the world. Maybe it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make good math, but I've seen it in the lives of hundreds and hundreds of people that when they begin to include God in their giving and begin to include others in their giving, they themselves were blessed. We're going to take a short break. I want to share J.W. West books with you, and I can assure you, you would be blessed by these. We'll be right back in a moment. We are offering these spiritual resources which can be very helpful to you, as you learn more about how God is working supernaturally through His people today. Author and Pastor Jay West offer these five books for your continued, spiritual training. Larry Langston says, I have read these, and they were a massive blessing to me. Other people say the same thing. These are some of the best insights into how God downloads His presence, into our lives. And they teach how to effectively minister to others through the many examples of ministry by Jay West. Order directly from Jay today, or purchase them at almost any bookstore. The titles are Willing to Yield, Downloads from Heaven, Kingdom Encounters, Well, 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 and The Adventures of Poodle Lou. Order your copies today from the address shown. The cost is only $10 each, and the cost of shipping. You will be blessed and you will be a blessing. Well, here I am with my ministry partner, J.W. West. We just shared uh, some of the books with you. They're beautifully bound. They're beautifully written. They'll be a blessing to you. Jay, would you take a moment and explain to our viewers how to access your website and how they can receive the books? Yeah, so if you go to the website on the screen, www.kingdomencounters.net, and then uh, there's two places you can go on there. There'll be a place where you can leave a note. Uh, you can leave that if you want, but there's a place for giving. And if you use the, the uh, tab that says giving and then pull it down, there'll be two options, one for Kingdom Encounters and one for Anointed to Go. Anointed to Go is the second one. That's my ministry. Uh, Kingdom Encounters is the name of the church I planted that my son now pastors. You pull that tab down, you give to Anointed to Go, and you can put in there a note of what you're buying. So the books, all the books are $10, and then it's $4 for shipping. So it's a total of $14. You might think, well, that might be a lot. Well, they're a lot more expensive if you buy it on Amazon or Target or Barnes & Noble or whatever. So uh, they're cheaper here. And we just throw in the shipping too. And $14 will cover everything. And if you make that donation, however many books you want, 
uh, we'll get them right off in the mail to you immediately. So uh, thank you. Well, Larry. I can assure you they will be a blessing to you. Those who read or those who lead and Jay and I can only share a limited number of examples here on the broadcast, but he has uh, dozens and dozens of scriptures and dozens of illustrations and experiences to the glory of God. Jay is a matter of fact person. He is six seven, so he's a big guy. <laughs> but he is a matter of fact. He's not uh, one that is to be a, a, a braggart or to lift himself up. But we're here to lift up the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, "If I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me." So we believe as we're extolling the goodness of God and sharing the principles of walking by faith and walking in obedience, uh, our lives will be transformed and the kingdom of God will be expanded in the earth. Jay, I believe one of your favorite scriptures, if you be willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. Would you like to talk about that for a moment? Yeah, you know, Isaiah 119 says, if you're willing and obedient, a lot of believers are willing, but they don't get to the obedience stage. And then some believers are obedient, but they do it unwillingly. And uh, the next verse is, is kind of harsh. It says, but if you refuse and rebel, you'll be devoured by the sword. So it's like God gives you the life choice first, Isaiah 119. But if you want to go there, there's, there's a death choice in verse 20. Uh, but I've seen the life choice over and over. Uh, can I share my refrigerator story? Do we have yeah. time for that? Yeah, sure. So I, it was when we lived right there in Houston. I lived in Richmond, Rosenberg area. And we were listening to KSBJ radio, which I think you still have in town. Is that correct? And there was a church on the north side up by you somewhere in Spring Woodlands area, somewhere up there that burned down. And I knew the pastor and they listed a lot of items they needed. And one of them was a refrigerator. Well, I turned to my wife as we were driving in. I said, we have a refrigerator. And she said, yeah, but we only have one. It's full of food. I said, I know, but I think we should offer it and let's see what God does. We won't tell anybody else. So we called the pastor and we told him on Monday and his name was Pastor Ernie. And he said, that was very kind of us and generous. He said, I'll have somebody pick it up, but I can't pick it up till Saturday. And I said, that's great because I only have one refrigerator. So we prayed about it. Diane and I prayed Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And then on Thursday, members of our church, she called me and a lady in our church called us and she said, my husband and I are getting a new refrigerator, and every time we pray about what to do with our old one, it's only two years old, we we're just thinking that we're supposed to give it to you. Do you need a refrigerator? And I told her, her name was Nancy. I said, Nancy, you have no idea how much I need a refrigerator. Then she said, well, here's the deal. Our new one's being delivered on Saturday. I can have our old one delivered to your house for free on Saturday. I said, Saturday's perfect because that's when our old, our old one's going out the door. And so we got the refrigerator back. Honestly, what we did was we gave we gave the refrigerator from Nancy to the church. That way we didn't have to unload all of our food out of the kitchen, move the refrigerator through the house and back in. It's just saved a lot of work. But God provided a refrigerator when we made the decision to give ours away. So it took faith because you only have one refrigerator and it's got frozen food and milk and dairy products and everything else. It's like, OK, God, you said do it. So we did it. And that's that was the result. So, well, God. I will tell you that would take a huge step of faith to give away your only refrigerator. <laughs> but that, to me, it builds my faith when you talk about how all of those circumstances and situations evolved. I think God just must have a lot of fun working on our behalf. And again, I mentioned earlier, He gives seed to the sower and bread to the eater. And so, we know that God's word does not return void, but when he sends his word, he sends us those supernatural urges. When he leads us to be generous with others, we know that that seed isn't going to return void. His word is not going to return void. He's going to accomplish what he sends it to do. All right. If I could share another testimony. Uh, this was just before our son was born. My wife was pregnant and we had, hope it's so, we had gone to a crusade up in Dallas of an of a, uh, evangelist that you all would know. I won't mention his name for now, but I'll, we went to this crusade and they were taking an offering and I didn't have my checkbook with me, but I heard the Lord say, give $500. Now my wife wasn't working. She's pregnant with her son. And then uh, they took another offering another time and the Lord said, double it. And I told my wife, I said, we better give now before he says double it again. And uh, so <laughs> anyway, we gave that thousand dollars to this ministry and we went home and her, the doctor that was going to do the delivery for her, uh, 
uh, whatever that name, the name of that doctor is, he said, he said, I've delivered over 6,000 babies. I've never done this in my life. He said, but I feel led. I'm going to pay for everything your insurance doesn't cover. Wow. I'm going to give it to you totally free. He said, wow. I've given over, I've delivered 6,000 babies. I've never, ever, ever offered this, but wow. I was praying and God said, go ahead and give, pay for the balance. So it came back in, in huge amounts. Just being wow. obedient up there. So, God is faithful. That is for sure. Well, I would really love, I really would love our viewers to, to, to receive the spirit of generosity. Maybe we should just have a prayer. We pray for healing. We pray for salvation. We pray for special needs. I just want to pray for an impartation of a generous spirit, because my friend, I will tell you, if you don't have a generous spirit, you don't know what you're missing. Maybe your life has become dull and boring. Maybe you're depressed. Maybe you're overwhelmed by everything taking place. Well, this will introduce another level of joy in your life. There's nothing like the joy of giving, the joy of generosity. And as J.W. West said earlier, God gave his only begotten son. It's not like he had a whole family or brood there in heaven. He gave his only begotten son, the Lord Jesus Christ, for us, that whosoever believeth in him would not perish but have everlasting life. I want to pray right now for you, viewer, wherever you are. Just stop what you're doing. Open up your heart. Open up your faith. Just lift your hands if you, if you would. And I want to pray for the spirit of generosity, which comes from the spirit of the Lord, to rise up in you and begin to listen. Also activate your hearing to hear God's leading, because we're not trying to lead you into something. We want the Holy Spirit to lead you and guide you the most advantageous thing you can do besides your personal salvation is learning to hear the leadership of the Holy Spirit and obey it. Let's pray right now. Pray with me wherever you are. Lord Jesus, I just ask you to come and baptize me with your Holy Spirit. Open up my ears that I can begin to hear your leading. Touch my inner being, my spirit man, to follow your leading. And Lord, I ask you to give me a spirit an attitude of generosity so that I can be a blessing wherever you lead me to be a blessing. I thank you for it, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. <laughs> so my friend, walk in the spirit of, of generosity and have fun with it. All right. I was in Chicago ministering once at a church and uh, in Geneva, Illinois, and the church was fan-shaped, and I was sitting there. I was the guest speaker, but... Uh, was sitting there, and the Lord spoke to me, said there was a family on the other side where the husband was unemployed. So I walked over. I said, which family is it? He pointed him out. I walked up. I said, I feel like you're unemployed. Is that correct? He said, yes. So I had a prayer with him and his wife and their two kids. And then the Lord said, give them some money to help their expenses. And I always carried a check in those days um, with me. And so I asked the Lord real quick, how much should I give? And he said, you decide. So anyway, I decided to give them $250 because I thought that would buy them some groceries for a week or two and just help them over the hump, so to speak. And they were very gracious and kind. And so in my ministry, I don't write appeal letters. And so when money comes in, it's always a surprise. I came home that week and I came home and when I went out to the mailbox, I opened the mailbox. There was an envelope from one of our larger churches in town. I didn't know what it was. There was a letter on the inside that said, we've never had you in yet. We will eventually. We know you go to a lot of smaller churches and we were, you were on our heart. We just want to bless you. And there was a check for $2,500. So 10 times the amount I'd given away popped in my mailbox the next day. So he does that. We're, we're talking about being uh, generous, having the spirit of generosity, supernatural giving as we're nudged by the Holy Spirit. We're out of time today. We've had so much fun being with you. Look for us again here again, Mondays, Wednesdays. Fridays and Sundays, Supernatural Ministry. We'll be back with you again soon. J.W. West, Larry Langston saying, God bless you and enjoy the spirit of generosity. If you are blessed by this ministry and want to be a blessing in return, you can mail your financial support to Best Life TV Network, 26400 Kirkendall Road. Sweet C. 180-243 The Woodlands, Texas, zip code 77375 Thank you.